Hello, and uh, next up I'm going to make a um, master control for the complete rig. Um, uh, once again this could be any shape, but uh, just for the sakes of uh, learning a little bit more about how Maya works, um, I'm going to um, uh, combine two curves. So what I'm going to do is just uh, take the shape that we've already got and duplicate it. Um, and drag it out of the buffer and into the world by if I just control Z I'm going to select it uh, in the outliner and drag it out um, and then it's at translate and Y so going to set it to zero so it's along the ground plane and duplicate it again by pressing Control D um, and I think there were I think we made 20 sides I'm just gonna uh, that looks about right so 18 okay so we've got two curves there um, I'm just making a nice shape um, just for the sakes of showing you this so I've got two shapes and then I'm going to press Control G to uh, make an empty group, Control G, and then I'm going to select um, body shape, body control one shape um, and body control two shape and if you don't see these um, it's because this isn't checked. So make sure that's checked and then select the group node and down here in the um, mel bar here I'm going to write parent um, what is it parent relative uh, that's her shape I think and then select it and press control enter and it goes wrong and the reason it goes wrong is because I didn't freeze the transforms on that rotation of 18 up here so I'm control Z undo that and I'm going to go to modify and then freeze transforms and then select the shapes again select the empty group <laughs> and go to parent uh, and then highlight that and there we go and now our object is made out of two shapes um, and you can select them as one um, and uh, let's just quickly rename this so Let's call it uh, bouncing ball control like that, um, and yeah, and then rename the control shapes as well. Bouncing ball control one shape. And I'm just going to copy and paste this. Brilliant. And I mean, just to show you something more, we can then go into here uh, and under object display, um, just to give it a little more sort of unique uh, visual feedback. We'll just enable the overrides. And there we go. We've got a lovely custom control. Um, although, to be honest, to me that looks sort of confusing. So maybe that's not the way to go. Uh, let's try just one color. Okay, fair enough. That reads now more as one control. So I'm going to keep it at that. Um, moving on, we've got the eyes to do next. Um, so the eyes, they're kind of pointing in two different directions. Um, so what I'm going to do for this, 
um, is create a control where you can control both eyes but it still kind of makes sense um, and what I mean by that is because they're pointing in two different directions and normally you kind of have a control for the eyes right in front of the eyes that are looking forward if I stop rambling and just build it I think you'll kind of get what I mean so for this one I'm just going to build a, a generic uh, circle and I'm going to select the um, mesh buffer and go to um, match transform so I'm going to tear this off and match translations and rotations and that's that one and then I'm going to call this um, I R C T R L and next up I'm going to duplicate it and rename it R L for left control and then select the left mesh buffer and match the transforms and the rotations um, and then I'd like to offset these but I want to kind of offset them in equal amounts so I'm going to go to uh, up to the uh, tool settings and I'm going to go to snap settings relative and just off the top of my head I'm going to choose an arbitrary number 10 I think and snap these one up there mm, maybe a bit too far away let's control Z and let's go five snap that uh, that'll do okay and select the uh, right eye control and snap that five as well um, so then they read as the eye controls um, but then I want to have one control that controls both eyes so I'm going to select both of these so I've got both of them selected and duplicate them um, and then I'm going to go to the tool settings again and go to and press R for the rotate uh, manipulator or gizmo um, and make sure it's scale center now is it default or object if I go for default that's what I want what happens if I click object oh well, same thing right great um, in fact, these could be a little bit small. I might scale up all of them. Okay, that's cool. Um, so there are my controls. Now I just need to make sure that I uh, retain their um, their orientation, um, but give them uh, zero. Excuse me, I'm just going to take a drink of water. Uh, but make sure they have uh, clean zero transforms in the channel control. So first of all, I'm going to select uh, our outer controls. And I'm going, I'm going to press G to create an empty group. And yeah, select the shapes of those controls actually I need to rename these so let's call this I control shape one and then I uh, control shape two and select these shapes and select the empty group and call this parent slash R slash S and ah, and of course we need to freeze the transformations, don't we? So select those, modify, uh, freeze all trans. 
modify apply brilliant okay so select the shapes select the group press control enter brilliant <coughs> Okay, so that's our eye control set up um, and the next thing to do is to take the individual eye controls it's the left one and the right one and just give them uh, clean out their channels uh, using the same method as we've done before so I'm just going to delete duplicate those and I'm going to rename this one control buffer delete the shape and rename this one IL control buffer and delete the shape and then parent each uh, each of the controls to its uh, relevant buffer by selecting them pressing P for parent and the same for the left P for parent and then I'm going to select each buffer and parent it to the eye control and just to illustrate the point of this I'm then going to select the eye control and then the eye joint and I'm going to go up to um, rigging and then go to uh, constrain and down to aim and uh, aim constraint the eye to the um, control and I'm going to do the same with this one uh, constrain aim and then just to illustrate quickly uh, I'm going to take the um, meshes and parent that to join, take this one and parent the left eye mesh to the left eye join. It's quite difficult to select, and that's this one working, and this one working, and then both at the same time. Cool. Okay, so that all works. They follow the rotation pretty well. Um, I'm going to undo uh, that parenting of the eye mesh um, by pressing Control Z, and you can see that the uh, meshes have returned to the geometry uh, group. Um, and then next up, I'm going to make. Um, is it one more control for the tail? Yeah. Um, so we've got our individual tail pivots, uh, tail controls here. And the last control to make is one for the pivot, which is tucked away inside the body. So just going to use a um, circle. Going to duplicate that and then make sure discrete rotate is turned on so that's 90 degrees then duplicate it again and turn it 90 degrees again so here are our three circles and then select them all and freeze those transforms and then uh, create an empty group node Control G, select the uh, circle shapes and select the group node and type in parent dash relative dash shape and that should be that. That should, ah, and then uh, center the pivot inside, snap that to the joint. Okay, so that should work accordingly. Um, so yeah, that, that should be our controls. Um, I mean, we can 
make some added changes to them. Can uh, I can enable overrides and then slide the color along to make them a little more visible to see. Ah, except on this one, uh, I need to select the top node, uh, not the shape nodes. Um, down to display, drawing overrides, enable overrides, and then select the red, and then that should change all the colors like so. Yeah, and um, uh, that's that as far as uh, the controls um, uh, go. I mean, I'll probably change the colors of the left, uh, rest of them. Oh, I just need to, uh, uh, let's call this a tail a pivot control like that. And then I'm going to uh, duplicate that, delete the shapes and then turn this one into a buffer and select the control, select the buffer, press P, cool. Uh, so delete the empty groups as well. So uh, that's the body control uh, and our, ah, these must be empty uh, buffers, uh, empty group nodes from earlier. So uh, tail pivot, uh, our tail controls, uh, our body control, and our eye control. And I'm going to uh, delete the contents of eye control and then turn that into a buffer node. Um, and there are all our um, bouncing ball control. Yeah, that's that one down the bottom there. Um, okay, so that's all our controls set up. I'm going to uh, select those and then group them into controls. I'm going to select the joints and group those into joints. And then select those groups and group them under bouncing ball. Okay, um, so just a, a, to recap, we've now set up our controls, we set up the joints and uh, we've uh, set up the geometry. So next I'll apply the constraints and apply some deformations and then do the weighting and then we should be pretty much there as far as this rig goes. Alright, brilliant, cool.